to another edition of Art Center Live. My name is Hyla Crane and I'm the Executive Director at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. Thank you so much for joining us today. As I said yesterday, we are continuing and giving you a chance to meet all of the artists whose work is presently in our exhibition, Abstraction and Expressionism. The artist that we're going to be talking to today is Gary Armstrong. Hi, Gary. How are you? Hello. Hello, Hyla. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, Gary, can you tell our friends a little bit about the work that you've put into this exhibition? Because it's I have one piece that is part of a larger installation behind me, but your pieces are indeed um individual components that make up an installation can you talk to us a little bit about um the process and, and what our people can expect to see when they come to the gallery sure i'd like to um the work the work that i'm showing at the in the um, center there's five pieces and they they range in uh, approach from um very very quiet, very subtle, very flat to a more illusionistic um, image, uh, like the ones behind me, which are more illusion. Um, the, the, the third dimension is implied in these pieces. Um, the flat work really um, came about um, by, because of the time frame that I'm working in, you know, in other words, Things are moving pretty fast, and I don't want to spend a lot of time doing large, uh, single image pieces. I like to work through and then uh, a piece, and then put it next to another piece to make combinations. I call them ensembles. Uh, so that's that's basically you're seeing five pieces uh, that range from uh, flat to pattern to um, uh, more formal composition and then illusion in the in the show. And what materials are you working with, Gary? Just so that our viewers are going to know, um, these compositions, most of the ones that are here right now in our show, are circular pieces that are then placed together to create the installation. What are the materials that you're working with, Gary? Well, these these pieces are all wood. They're they're basically bamboo structures which I then enhance with uh, uh, modeling paste and then um, occasionally oil paints and um, more typically acrylic paints. So I build in layered forms from flat to textural elements. I also like to cut through the element, like the piece behind you, where you're actually starting to see you're starting to see the wall through the piece and shadows, which make it very dimensional and, and very, what I think is very alive because of the light patterns on them. The I agree. The, these are one of my favorites. And this is a series of four or five? Five, yes. Five, five. five pieces that, that go together. But even as a standalone piece, it is really beautiful. And there is a lot of of texture within it. I can see that now. That's why I was asking about the materials. I, I think it's it's lovely and it's delicate and I do. I like the play of light and shadow um, depending on where you place it. It looked very different at the gallery than it looks when we bring it here and hang it behind me. Um, yes. The, the notion of the surface is very important in these pieces in that, uh, you know, you're dealing with something very flat, but you can make it also very textural. So I go, I'll go in, working on wood, you can go in with a sander, an electric sander, and sand down through the layers to have images project from underneath to embellish the, the illusion that's, that's being created. So, you know, you're working with various layers and of course building up, but you're also cutting through to the wall. So you have a nice textural relationship and shadow kind of mosaic, you know, uh, that's working with you. And they're, 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 um, they're, they have a, they have a kind of uh, uniqueness because of the way they play with light. Agree. So Gary, 
this is the work that you're doing now, but I know that you have had a long career in the art world. Um, I think my friends would like to get to know a little bit about you. How did you start working as an artist? Tell us a little bit about your background, because I have seen work that you've done that is markedly different from this, because <laughs> there is such a, a long history that you have had working as an artist. So where did it start? Where How, how did it all begin for you? Well, I won my first um, art award when I was eight years old. I won a second prize in, from, in a hobby shop exhibition. I won a brownie Hawkeye camera after coloring an Easter bunny. So I've been doing this a very long time. It's something that I really, um, uh, I believe was was born to do. I mean, it's a part of me, a major part of me. Um, I was I was a college professor for 26 years and teaching and taught the arts, the visual arts and design classes. So, um, uh, I've been I've been living it as so to speak. Um, in regard to my education, um, I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania and I have my BFA there. Um, in painting, but I also um, have a painting certificate from the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, which mm -hmm. is the oldest art school in America, and studied with uh, uh, Jack Levine and Hobson Pittman and, and uh, Walter Stubfink and Franklin Watkins. And these are all well-established American painters of that particular period in time, 40s and 50s, you know. Um, and then um, I was drafted into, into the Vietnam situation during the Vietnam War, and I can't, went out. When I got out, I went to graduate school at Cranbrook Academy of Art and studied with George Ortman, who is a constructivist who really did influence my work a great deal. And that's why the pieces have that dimensional quality to them and those holes in them, and they stand off the wall, and they have a kind of pattern structure to them that way. So that's the history. Um, it's very much a part of my life, Art. Again, these pieces um, are abstract and, and sort of when you look at them, you're looking at the composition, you're looking at the work. The story they tell is not one that reaches out as you would with work that is more realistic. And yet you've done work that's very realistic. So how do you manage to find, I guess, the inspiration when you're doing work that's very realistic people or places as opposed to work like this where you're really creating a very abstract vision? Well, the, um, the story of sight is really what this work is about. Um, the, the notion of um, abstraction, I really think I'm a realist quite honestly, meaning that if I follow the tradition of the Western world um, and look at people like Paul Cezanne, he was, he was very much into the notion of how the mind, how the photons of the eye perceive the world. It wasn't so much, and of course he was on the verge of the 20th century, we're on the verge of the 21st century, so that's going to take us even more specifically inside and re we realize that sight is an internal thing not just an external thing so that the appearance of things outside don't have a have a don't they don't move me like the 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 understanding of how i see the things outside so i like i what i'm interested in is really studying the way we see and 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 then projecting that forward for example the mind sees pattern, the mind sees color, the mind sees um, texture, those three things. Our mind puts them together and says, oh, that's Hyla, you see? So the notion is, is how can I get to the more rudimentary aspects of my sight or my ability to see, you see? So for example, our eyes are curvilinear, our eyes are hemispheres. So, and we see through cones of vision. Yeah. So obviously I'm gonna do circular things. You follow but me? 
I do follow you, and yet that hasn't always been the pattern of your work. I, I, this is where you are now, and that makes a lot of sense, but how did you arrive at that through sort of the process of having worked? There have been many, I guess, different phases and stages to your work to reach this point. What, what's, how was that, how, how did that evolve over time? I understand where we're talking about right now with the work, but was there sort of an evolution from, say, when you're doing a portrait of a child to suddenly doing these works that uh, tell a very different kind of story? Well, um, I, was the, I, was re, I was taught classically to paint, so I can paint what I see, okay? But in my early pursuit of my understanding of myself and my world as an artist, or seeing the world from my perspective as an artist, I noticed that the things that I was painting were, had a circular composition, and they were hemispheres. So and I, I put 10 or 20 pieces together, and I said, well, what is this, what, are, what is the single unifying element in all this work? And they seem to be circular. They seem to be, you know, uh, hemispheric. So as I started to mature as a, be a person, as well as an artist, I started to, you know, kind of investigate that more succinctly, you know. Today... You know, to, I, if you have a second, I'll show you an early piece and you'll get a chance to to uh, see it. I'll just get it just one second. Okay, not too far. No, I won't. Fortunately, uh, Gary is coming to us from his studio where the work is behind him. Yes, this is... This is one of my early paintings. Okay, I, was 18. I was 18 when I did this painting. I didn't know I was painting circular forms and hemispheric objects and things like that. Mm. There was a whole series of images like this that I was producing. And I said, wait a minute, what, why did I bend that, that piece of wood? Why did I create the dish from above and, and the circular motif below? So that's the, the real origin of the work. You know, the development was, I went from, I went from a very classical education to a design school. And my, my teacher, George Ortman, was a constructivist. So he built things that were very abstract, you know, and uh, that was the kind of understanding that we had. I had uh, growing and as a mature artist towards a mature artist, you know, I'm not interested in cliches. I'm really interested in trying to get to the root of why I'm seeing the world and, and 21st century thinking as well. Interesting. Now, you've mentioned a lot of instructors through your academic career. Uh, perhaps besides those instructors, who or what has been a major influence on you as an artist? Uh, I apologize. A friend of mine just knocked on the door. <laughs> um, it happens. Uh, um, the, um, you know, I, I very much, uh, I really pay a lot of respect to all of the people that have made art before me, you know. In particular, I love, I, I, I pay homage to Joseph Albers, I pay homage to uh, Paul Cezanne, I mean, there's a lot I could, you know, Al Held, uh, you know, there's a number of artists that I could name that have influenced my work. Um, both the realistic work as well as the non-objective style work. Well, Gary, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, your work is so interesting and compelling, and I think as we listen to you, it gives us more to think about when we look at these very big installations. I encourage all of my friends out there to make sure they take some time to come down to the Marco Island Center for the Arts before November 22nd. The exhibition will be here. We'll be having a reception the second Tuesday of November. So please come on down and check out Abstraction and Expressionism. A few happenings here at the Art Center this week, this Thursday, and there are still tickets available. Gulf Shore Opera, Divas and Duets will be here with some two beautiful uh, singers who will be sharing some beautiful operatic music with us. 
The following week, Thursday, October 28th, another artist from Abstraction and Expressionism, Danny Popoff, will be, uh, we will be having a live performance art evening that will be accompanied by music by Chris Bepko. That, there is no cost for that event, but we do ask that you give us a call here at the Art Center and make your reservation for that. And we also will be having, at the beginning of November, another musical interludes. We're bringing back Patchouli and Tara Guitara on November 4th. Tickets are available for both of our um, musical interludes concerts, either on our website, www.markoislandart.org, or just give us a call at 239-394-4221. Gary... Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was really illuminating in terms of thinking about your work and seeing it in, um, sort of fr seeing it through, let's say, your eyes. So thank you so much for joining us. To my friends out there, thank you for joining us. We are going to continue with our artist series tomorrow. We'll be joined by uh, Danny Pop, Donny Papa. And then on Thursday at 4 o'clock, we'll be interviewing modern quilter and artist uh, Cheryl Cosley. And that will cover the four artists in abstraction and expressionism. The, the uh, exhibition that's here in our gallery until November 22nd. So my thank friends, you. oh, thank you, Gary. My friends, come on, step through our door because you know when you cross our threshold, you all become part of our art family. And here at the Marco Island Center for the Arts, we strive every day to be your art home. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.